green, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great to be here. Um, we're here to, to talk about a proposal. And you are? Um, oh, I'm Gerard Byrne, uh, known <laughs> by Cherry, Commissioner of Parks and Recreation. And I'm really excited to be here to talk about a proposal that we solicited about uh, having an outside company come in and uh, private and uh, develop part of our uh, tennis complex at Anthony at Bedroom Park at 11 Olympic Lane, Ardsley. Um, this goes back many, many years. And I think for the public to understand, uh, I, I wrote some bullet points. I like to read it out to give us a little summary. And then I like to turn it over to Sport Time to share you with the presentation. Uh, a request for proposal was sent out in 2004 to develop indoor tennis at Anthony at Veteran Park with an outside vendor. Numerous proposals were submitted, and after thorough process that included the town board, advisory board, and a community public discussion, the town selected sport time to develop, manage, and operate an indoor program for a 15-year license agreement. This included invested $2 million at the time for creating an indoor tennis bubble facility. The license signed in late 2007. Around 2008, a local resident sued the town that this agreement was in violation of the Finneran law that restricted non-residents from using the town-owned park. The judge sided with the plaintiff and the town voided the agreement with sport time. We didn't move forward with executing it. In June of 2012, after we had a discussion with the town board, we were able to uh, get our state legislator and senators to pass along with the total bodies of both government groups, a home room legislation that would allow them to lease the Anthony at Veteran Park tennis complex or portions of it for up to 30 years for the operation of seasonal tennis. In 2022, the Greenberg Parks and Recreation Department sent out a request for proposal for the operation of an indoor season and an outdoor season to operate seasonal tennis programs. We received two proposals one from Sport Time and the other from Tennis Innovators from White Plains. And the Tennis Selection Committee, consisting of a town board representative, Ellen Hendricks, advisory board members, Irene Kanowitz, Doreen Lifson, and Eric Zinger, uh, resident Larry Lefkowitz, Tennis Director Janet Lefkowitz, Deputy Commissioner Joe LaCasey, and Brian Simmons, and me, we did a thorough review of the proposals and recommended that we select Sport Time for indoor and outdoor lease agreements to develop, manage, and operate a tennis facility at Anthony at Veteran Park. The advisory board, after studying the recommended proposals and listening to a thorough presentation we had last summer, um, they recommended and endorsed that we move forward to submit to the town board of the community uh, for approval. Since that time, members of the committee, working with uh, town attorney Joseph Danko, we now have in final draft form with, you know, with some changes that can, minor changes that could possibly occur. Uh, time to invest up to $12 million in facility development, execute a 15 year agreement with option to renew for three five year extensions, uh, a program at Anthony at Veteran Park. So this combines the indoor and outdoor seasons for 15 years will bring in a minimum of $6,749 and change. And over the course of 30 years, it could bring in over $20 million to our community. What the state legislation did is that all the money we generate will go back into a special account that has to be used for developing our facilities in our park system. As the town board is aware, and the committee and legal department would like to define more clearly the home rule legislation, what is a tennis facility? We don't wanna be in a situation. We feel that the tennis facility in is there what it is, but we want to tighten it up so we're in the process of getting that changed. So we are presently taking steps to amend that legislation to define a place that provides programming and services related to tennis and other sports, which requires the use of rackets and paddles to strike balls or objects. So at, at this time, and, and the outdoor season that we're looking at would be from uh, May 12th to September 8th, in the indoor season from September 9th through May 11th. Um, it's interesting because we had an agreement and I, it tells you how long I've been with the town. That's the process started probably 19 years ago and we still have a sport time that you're gonna see their presentation. They're very established in the New York metropolitan area. We have uh, Cloyd Orkin, he's president and CEO of sport time. 
And Floyd, um, if we had executed the original agreement, this December would have been the end of the 15 years. And what I'm excited to say is that there's been innovation to the tennis field and the proposal we have now, I believe is better and, and more of the revenue that will be generated to us. So at this time now, I'd like to turn it over to Cloyd. Jerry, do you want to say what you guys like? Over there, you, Whatever, you can see here. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. My name is Claude. Not, Jerry likes to call me Claude. My parents tortured a little Jewish kid by giving me a French name. But I don't care what Jerry calls me. I just like when he calls me. <laughs> um, and uh, this is Ben Schlansky, who's the vice president of Sport Time. I'm the president and CEO. And we're both partners in a company that we've built together. Is he last... with you? Did you want to pull that chair over? Yeah, Jerry. That's Carlos. Do you want to sit here and let him? Carlos, Kim. What? Or do you want to sit here? Okay. Yeah, so and Carlos, Carlos, I'm sorry. Oh, you bring that you bring this chair, Joe, you sit over here. Great. So, Claude Oaken, President and CEO, Ben Schlansky, Vice President and Chief Legal Officer, Carlos Campo, Managing Director for Westchester. And we've all we've been working together for more than 20 years. Ben and I have been working together for 35 years. Ben was not 18 when he came to work and the first time he went and got he went and became a lawyer and came back. But uh, this is my 50th year in the tennis business. I started working in the tennis club when I was 12. So I'm going to try not to bore you with all the slides. Um, as Jerry said, Sport Time has been trying to build this facility in the park here in the beautiful town of Greenberg uh, for 20 years, roughly. We've signed a couple of licenses. And finally, it looks like it's going to happen. You heard that the original facility was supposed to cost 2 million, and this one may cost as much as 12. But times change. And luckily uh, for us, this is a good time for tennis and racket sports. Um, there have been some rough years in between, but the pandemic got people wanting to play outdoors and in larger areas. We're having a second tennis boom. And then this Called pickleball is now the largest and fastest growing sport in the world, and people are excited about that. And we're going to do some of that in the park if we if we have our way. So uh, I'll quickly run to the presentation. Um, this just tells you something about Sport Time. We're the largest operator of tennis and sports clubs in New York State. We operate 15 clubs right now with almost 100, 188 tennis courts, indoor courts, outdoor courts, soft courts, hard courts. We have uh, every kind of tennis court except for grass courts. Uh, we have 50 pickleball courts at the moment. We'll probably have 100 in the next year or so. Uh, we service about 30,000 members um, and players and of all ages and abilities. Um, we employ as many as 900 people, close to 1,000 in the summer, about 500 in the winter, and we control about 100 acres of property. Uh, this last year, we had about almost $70 million of revenue and almost $13 million of uh, earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So nobody's getting rich in the tennis business, but we're, we're pretty proud of what we've created, both as an employer, as a part of the state's uh, health and wellness community, and as a business that's continuing to thrive. Um, we have some great brands, the John Macro Tennis Academy, which started in 2010, which is going to be a brand that we do at uh, Anthony F. Veteran Park. We also do it in, in East Chester, in West Chester, in New York City, uh, where we run the largest tennis club in New York City and uh, in Long Island. Um, we're going to be a blue chip tenant. That's what this slide says, meaning uh, the company that runs all these facilities that we operate and that does that revenue and has those earnings is the, is the tenant. That's the lessee. So we have a lot of companies that, like ours, that are operate sites. Every site is its own company and the assets are hidden and you can't quite figure out who the tenant is. But in our case, we wanted to build a real company. Sport Time Clubs LLC owns and operates or leases or licenses every facility we own. And that's going to be the, the entity that signs this lease or these two leases if we uh, can get there, which looks pretty good right now. Um, we've done a lot of licensing and leasing, meaning we have other municipal partners who I think say terrific things about us um, because we usually find out a way to pay a lot of uh, fees, the highest fees possible, while still running affordable and accessible clubs. So we're a licensee in New York City at Randall's Island, where we built in 2009 the largest 
uh, tennis club in New York City. And that at a cost of $20 million in the middle of the recession, it was scary, but we got it done. And now we've been successful there. It's busy and a lot of other courts disappeared. So the city needed that. And now this year, we're in the middle of, a, of, a, of an expansion project there where we've invested another $45 million. So we will have invested $65 million in a facility in New York that we don't own, just the way we won't own the facility in your park. We will build it, we will pay for it, and you will own it. But we get to operate it. We got a 25 year license extension in New York City, and we run the John Mac Tennis Academy there, and we have a charity there called the Johnny Mac Tennis Project, where basically we, we service 2,400 kids a week. We're probably the largest tennis charity in the world, other than the USTA. And they come and play for free from schools in East Harlem and the South Bronx, and they get scholarships to train in the academy. We've sent 37 kids to four year colleges and universities came to us having nothing and not being uh, accomplished players and are now some of the best tennis players in the, wor in the world in their, in their age division. So we're very proud of that. And that community reinvestment and charitable work would be something that we do here. Uh, we're a licensee of um, Eastchester, as I said, our club at Lake Isle, which has been in existence since 2012. That, that, that town there just elected to give us 20 year license extension in exchange for both our success and it's a ongoing capital investment that we're making in the town. Um, we're a licensee of the Village of Mamaroneck, where we've been operating their facility at Harbor Island, Harbor Island Park since 2002. And a town of East Hampton, we operate a sports arena for them. And then Hempstead Lake State Park is our most recent um, license facility, the, the state of New York elected us to be the operator of that large uh, park, state park facility, which is tennis and pickleball uh, for the next 10 years. So I spoke about Reynolds Island. I won't bore you with the details. It's the largest, it will be by September, the largest indoor tennis club and training center in the world. And it's our, been our single largest capital project and our single largest municipal license. And it's, it's our flagship and we're super proud of it. We've, made a Wimbledon champion and an NCAA champion and thousands of adults and juniors play at the club every week and all year long uh, on, a, on all different bases and also through the charity. That's a picture of the original site plan of Randall's Island. That's a picture of what it's gonna, of where it almost is now and where it will be by September. It's a, it's a giant tennis court farm right in the middle of New York City. That's some aerial photos of the original facility after it opened. It looks like that now, but bigger. Uh, Lake Isle is the, probably the most similar municipal undertaking we've had to what we're going to do with you all. Um, and as I said, the license was recently extended. We built an entire club there where they did not have an indoor club, just the way we will do it at uh, Anthony F. Federer Park. Uh, we opened it in 2009. It cost almost $7 million. It's eight courts, three air structures, new clubhouse, new outdoor lighting, new infrastructure. Here's a picture of the site plan. Here's some pictures of what we built. And the, only the courts were there before the construction project, which miraculously opened a week before uh, Superstorm Sandy and did not get damaged. Uh, our other club in Westchester was destroyed. So we were, we had tennis courts after, after, after Sandy, which was amazing. Just, we got lucky, but also it was brand new infrastructure and it's better built now than it used to be as, as to will the infrastructure be uh, in Artsley. Uh, and then this is uh, sort of the outline of what we're going to do with you guys, if we can, and we hope we will. Uh, a distinctive indoor outdoor racket sports center. There'll be tennis and there'll be pickleball. Uh, there'll be a John Macro Tennis Academy program. All the residents of the unincorporated area will get a 10% discount off of both membership and program fees. Town permit holders that pay that annual fee for the outdoor season to play in the park will have access to our courts when they're not otherwise used by us. Um, We'll do at least 500 hours of annual free community programs, but probably much more than that. And we'll work with Park and Rec. We've been working with them for the last 20 years to try to get it done. We know Janet really well. Obviously, Jerry's a friend 
and uh, we're going to try to do great things in the park. Uh, and, and, and we've committed to at least a quarter of a million dollars of scholarships out of the gate. That's just pure underwriting of kids programming for kids who want to play but can't afford to play. It's means tested. That's a lot of hours That's of fantastic. kids. It's Over not, what period of time? That's a year. Every year, starting in year one. That's amazing. It's like a big number. It's a lot. It won't be one kid. It will be, you know, what, it's sort of in New York. When we, we built that club, the club in New York, just quick story, and I'll keep it moving. The club was supposed to cost, cost seven and a half million dollars, and it ended up costing 21. This was in 2009. Then we opened up the, the academy in 2010, and we knew, you know, we were, we were charging a lot of money in New York City, and there were a lot of people there who could afford it. But we didn't want the academy to be a monolith. We didn't want it to be all rich white kids, to be blunt. Neither did John, neither did we. So we created this charity and the underwriting and made it a, a mosaic of New York life. So it's immigrant families, it's kids of color and ethnicity, it's strivers, it's working class. It's, it's, and, and these kids get to go to college through their tennis exploits. And that's what we hope to do here, too. Um, the In site, terms of your employment, do you... Uh, you know, reach out to the local you know, community as well Absolutely. in terms of hiring. Absolutely. Yeah, we're a really diverse company. We're very proud of it um, in every way, economically, ethnically, and racially. And obviously part of it is because tennis is international. So we start out with a, with a multicolored staff that speaks all languages and come from all uh, countries because we have staff from all, coaches from all over the world. But in terms of the rank and file employees, the line employees, repair and maintenance and housekeeping, front desk, customer service, we hire locally. How, how many people do you have working for your company? About 500 now, about 900 in the summer. Are there, I'm just sort of curious. How many in Greenberg? Is that the number in Greenberg? No, no. How, many no. Are well, how many will work in the company now? Yeah. Do we, did we do an estimate? We probably think it's, it's somewhere between 30 to 50, depending on. Yeah. But there, I'm just sort of curious. I, I think it's really exciting, you know, what, especially what you're doing in terms of, um, you know, giving uh, opportunities and the charitable efforts of your company. I, I think it's really inspiring. Um, I'm wondering if there is um, opportunities for young people, you know, who graduated college or graduated high school, to say move not only you know just be an attendant, but to make this sort of a career. And if uh, that's something that you also will work with Absolutely. young people. I mean, I can probably speak in my case myself. Speaking to a microphone. Oh, sorry, I can I can speak myself. You know, as an example, like I started as a tennis instructor, helped a little at the front desk, and one thing led to another, and now I'm managing director of sites. So it is something I think very unique about a company, and I know Claude and Ben are very proud, and probably they don't speak so much about it, but. Is what I tell my staff when we hire. It's a, a career opportunity. So, and it starts local, obviously. I mean, we have a, one of my clubs, we have a staff that has been with us for, for close to 20 years as well. And, you know, she started young and she's not as, you know, as young as she was and but it made a career out of it. So it's, we can go on and on on each club and set examples of it, but that is the model. I think that's our model of creating careers for our staff. So we're, we're... I'll quickly answer. We're one of the few tennis club companies in the country that have a full uh, menu of employee benefits. So we're not sort of a piecework style company at all. So even our tennis coaches and uh, line employees uh, have uh, extensive paying time off benefits up to five weeks a year. Uh, health insurance subsidies for silver level health insurance that way, way exceed the affordable care requirements. So people can actually afford it by health insurance. A 401k match of up to 4% of their salary, including the student who just opted into the student loan repayment option. So we, people can use our match to pay their student loans. Uh, so we're trying to build careers for people, local, local, local people. Um, anyway, back to what we're gonna build for somewhere between 10 and $12 million, we think. I hope uh, it's a 10 court facility, 10 tennis uh, courts, six soft courts, which don't, and there are no soft courts in the park right now. That's part of the need. I think that's why the tennis lovers in uh, the town have, have wanted this for so long. They want for older players and players coping with injuries and players 
who want to play in a, in, on a safer, cooler, so, softer surface will have that option. And then we'll build four uh, hard courts uh, and six pickle, dedicated pickleball courts in two bubbles. So it'll, it'll be two air structures and a brand new clubhouse. And there'll, there'll be a smaller uh, sort of all purpose play space that will have pickleball and sports and camp activities. Um, better look at pictures, I think, if you can see them. So right. I might suggest just for PowerPoints, you probably have four PowerPoints on that slide. So people watching this on TV, they're not gonna be able to read that. They probably can make out it if it's on Zoom, but you might wanna consider if you're doing this presentation again to take a few, fewer words and larger. <laughs> I will do that when we do it again, but we're also happy for anybody who reaches out and yeah. says they wanna see all the words, we're happy to provide the PowerPoint or you guys probably have it already, right. but sorry about that. Right. But Excuse just for the people watching on TV, thinking, wasn't thinking about this you story. don't have to adjust your television. <laughs> <laughs> Covering the high <laughs> uh, Francis, that's a very good point. And uh, if, if any resident uh, would like to see this power presentation, just email me at gburn at Greenberg NY and I will email them this presentation. Mm -hmm. You put it on the well, website. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. idea. Yeah. So this is a picture, an aerial view of the two bubbles, the one to the right. Uh, would be the soft courts, the six soft courts, the one to the left would be the uh, four hard courts and the six pickleball courts. And then the open space just above the clubhouse is the seasonal enclosure for pickleball and sports and camp activities. And then that permanent uh, floor plan space is a clubhouse. I think we have some detail, locker rooms, uh, snack bar of some kind, vending, some offices, ADA, everything's ADA accessible to ground level without the use of lifts, wheelchair access, access for people who need accessibility. Then there's some dimensional views, some more dimensional views. There's a transparent view. This is all basically conceptual. Obviously a lot of thought has gone into the layout. But also, obviously, we're going to work through a planning phase where whatever reviews are required by the municipality will happen, whether it's architectural or, or ADA or, or design. There's another through view where you can see court sizes, dimensions, and the actual color of the surfaces. That's pretty much the presentation. So I thought I was, I was told to go quick. I'm sorry if it wasn't that quick, but we wanted time for questions. Is a tennis? I remember there was like a little downturn in tennis in a couple of years ago. Now it's picking up. So there was a, there was a big downturn, and it was a, both slow and a slow and steady decline in the overall number of players. And it, it you know at one there was at one point where Sports Illustrated had a cover that asked, "Was tennis dead?" It was never dead. I mean, in where we live, because it's a generational sport. It's a college access sport so that you know it's been a, a great a sport for many but it's it's in a, a major resurgence there's six million more players playing today than in the year before the pandemic and there's about 26 million active players in the country and this this our area which is called the eastern section was last year the busiest section meaning almost 10 percent of the residents here play tennis it's, we've just uh, lost that number one spot to uh, Southern California and Florida, which usually they were in front. Those are the three big areas, Florida, Southern California, and here. And it's remarkable that we're basically either one or two because it's not, the weather here is not good, which is one of the reasons we need to build these facilities so people can play year round. But I think the, the next generation of players were sort of born in the last decade and then exploded during the pandemic when they had a little more free time and wanted a little more fresh air. So I think tennis is doing pretty well. And Jerry, what's the steps that you think have to be taken? Great question. Thanks. Um, uh, what I think the next step would be now, since uh, we're just about done with the uh, lease agreements, I, I think uh, Joe Danko is uh, touching up a few things. We sent a preliminary draft to the town board already. I think the next step would be, and I've looked at my calendar is what we did back in uh, 2004 is to have a public discussion 
uh, the law does not require us to, but the town board at the time, and I know you would too, to be transparent, is give the community the chance to come out, see this presentation and field questions uh, from them. And uh, I'm hoping we can get on the agenda on Wednesday, June 14th for the next step, if it's okay with this board, you may want to think about it and discuss it later. It doesn't have to have an answer now, of course. And then um, at, at that point, uh, I would hope maybe in June or August that we can uh, have a resolution for the town board, uh, whether to sign or not to sign. Do we the need to have are there any requirements from Albany or? Is, uh, no, separate to that. I mean, I, I think um, we're fine in the law that we have now, but we want to tighten it up. We want to eliminate any possibility. I had a discussion with Joe Danko and uh, we felt as we've shared with you that we had some draft uh, legislation. Uh, Councilwoman Ellen Hendricks is working right now with our uh, legislator and, and senators to try to get it up on the agenda and approved. And that issue is even addressed in the uh, lease agreement uh, that we have put forth. So I think they both can coexist at the same time. So we need a home rule message? Yeah, just an amendment. Just We're not amendment. changing, just, 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 just we, we just want to define what is a tennis facility, which right. we want to yes. say. And, and just to clarify once again, that definition would say that a tennis facility is a place that provides programming and services related to tennis, and other sports which require the use of rackets or paddles to strike balls or objects so that pickleball can be included in that definition as well. Have you done a plan that shows, I'm sorry, Ellen, did you want to? No, you, go ahead. Okay. I can ask you. Do you have a plan that shows the elevation of the dome versus the um, residents that are around the properties? Because some of these look like light bulbs, you know, from a distance. Um, well, we certainly have elevations and different perspective views, right. which I didn't spend a lot of time focusing on. And to be honest, I would let our architect really more fully illuminate it for you guys, or if we come before the public. Pardon the pun. Or, pardon the pun. <laughs> or if we come before the public, we will um, be prepared to show that these the whole uh, massing is, is going to be appropriate to the geography and it's in a low, it's in a low point. It's it's on the away from the residential side. I mean, I think the you guys picked, you guys did most of the work by picking the right site in the park. But I but I think that we'll 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 be able to assuage people's fears about it being very attractive and also not uh, any sort of eyesore. Yeah, but I would appreciate it if you could assuage my concern as opposed to waiting until you have a public hearing or a public discussion to assuage the concerns of the public. I, I would uh, like- But to, I mean, you just have to say how you want sure. me to do it. Like I can, I can, I can, we have a terrific architect, he's local, he's White Plains. And he, you know, he's comfortable that he can, that he can design something and has designed something that works. Right. So I, I just, we could meet with you or okay. we could, you could ask for, I, I don't know exactly what kind of perspective drawing would help, but we can create whatever would help. I guess. Right. What I like to add to that, that's a good right. point. Is this, is this, is this on? Because that's going to be a primary concern. In addition, right. in the presentation we have right. with the you know uh, lease agreement, um, that is conditional. After the, if the town board approves it, it's still conditional that it meets all building codes and, and it will go to a planning board of review. And there still will be more discussions and then probably in more detail at that time we will have the heights and whatever, and the planning board will make sure that we address all those issues. So Jerry, push the button on the microphone. See I mean, that what's, what, what I think we have to work together to do- That's how you got to, your finger on it. There you go. What I think we would have to work together to do at any time that you want us to, is to figure out the, the right tools of analysis. I mean, maybe we have to create views from various other elevations. The heights are really set in stone, like an air structure, has to be a certain height based on its narrowest point. Otherwise you can fall down on your snow load. Right. So that we can't change. The elevations we can change and the locations we can change, although it's a very narrow and strangely shaped building envelope. Right. So the design sort of is, 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 works with that to make it work. But I mean, we're not, we're, I'm, I'll, we'll, we'll direct and pay for whatever analysis we need to create. I just don't want it to be what, I want it to be real, something that has. What makes this site? What makes the site very attractive 
is as there's a lot of different grades in Anthony and Veteran Park. And probably the, the highest point of this development will be below uh, the height of the, the interactive pool. And it's surrounded really by a lot of parkland. It's it also uh, the border on the east end. Its neighbor is the Springbrook Parkway. So you have to go all the way across that. Then the elevation starts to go up into some of the few homes that are in there. So from uh, it's not like we're putting it you know, in, in the middle of, uh, of a major development with homes surrounding. This is really, really buffered by parkland. And the other neighbor would be the, uh, you know, Ardsley Highway Garage, but they won't even be able to see it. At this point, all we need to know is that it's going to be addressed. Right. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, the other, the only other thing I would point out, it's just the logic of the park, is there, there obviously, we're not coming into a park that's unlighted and introducing light. We're coming to a park where there are many lighted courts and have been there for a long time. And we're at, are, we're required as a term of the leases to light these courts for outdoor play. But when the air structures are in place, we're greatly reducing the light, not enhancing the light. Could you just run out and, fresh? I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, uh, two things. Number one, the lighting can also, there are lights that are more directed and, and don't have ambient spread that can be used, correct? Well, there, there, are, there are, there's no question that the lights will be building have less pollution and less spread. But obviously, if, if, you, if have you have, have to enough. light the entire playing area, there's some, I'm not going to tell you that there's not some light, you know, it's a big area and you need 50, 30 or 40 or 50 candle power. But compared to the lights that are there now, the old fashioned metal halide lights that aren't focused the way a modern LED is, there'll be substantially Correct. less that's, light pollution. Yeah. That's my point. And I have, I just wanted to ask one more thing for Jerry. Um, as you mentioned, all the, all the proceeds get funneled back into the park system. So you might want to just suggest some of the things that you would use those monies for. Great question. Uh, immediately, um, we are looking at addressing issues at Anthony at Veteran Park, whether it's the parking lot and definitely the tennis courts. It's a 19 uh, lighted tennis course facility right now. We are only removing seven of those courts. We still have 12 courts that will, two of them will be for pickleball and then the remaining will be for tennis. All of those uh, courts, it's expensive these days to maintain. And what we're so excited about this program is not only is that our residents will be able to get a high quality commercial recreation experience at fair market value, our residents will receive a 10% discount we will have a program in place for um, uh, people in financial need. And as you heard earlier, that they have an established program that is gonna carry over for us. So our residents are gonna have a great experience, the young ones that can take it on to the next level. And I believe with the money that goes back into the park and the programs, I believe not only will this be the best commercial program in the Westchester area, I think from a public standpoint, for affordable tenants, because we'll be running our programs too, but it's at a different marketplace that it's going to be the best in the state of New York. And infrastructure no wise, you'll be doing repairs, correct? And we'll, we'll upgrades? Be, for example, and... to renovate a tennis course like $100,000. The first year we're going to take, we're, we're bringing in between the two leases $250,000 minimum. And this agreement, if they have a successful business, we get 10%, it exceeds 10% of their gross receipts we'll get more than $250,000. We hope they're successful because that's more will. money that we generated that we put into that park that goes back into our park system. And, and you will. I mean, part of the dance, and I think and we've been chosen three times, so we must be doing something right, I hope. Uh, uh, one of the things we do is be honest about what we're going to do and what the likely results will be. But we also have this long track record now of actual results as a less year licensee of municipality where our license fee is always, because it's the best way to do it, a guaranteed base fee versus a percentage of revenues. And just by way of example, in the Marinick this year, we're on schedule to pay $450,000 in annual license fees. That's an antiquated eight court facility. In Lake Isle this year, I believe we're on schedule to pay about $600,000 of license fees. And in New York City, I believe this year, we're paying close to $2 million of license fees in a year. And, and and what's funny, or not funny, what's ironic is since the first time we appeared before 
the Parks Committee and Jerry, they've been trying to find a way to renovate these old, somewhat dilapidated courts. That's and now and they've been band-aiding together for 20 years. So right. this should provide the funding to refurbish the park for everyone. That's Great. the idea. All right. Thank you. Sounds excellent. Well, the, so the next step is to see if the town board if we can get on a, a public discussion, address some of the other issues mm -hmm. that came up today. And then maybe you know have something. But just keep in mind once the, like I said earlier, I want to reinforce if the lease agreement is approved, and I hope it is, and I advocate to, to be approved, that there is still a process for the community to get involved, and which will be through the planning board. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, they they ask the right questions during this process. They're gonna have to also work really fast on the home rule message because Albany is gonna be possibly out of session next month at the end of June. Yeah, we're, right. We're, we're moving on that right. Yeah. Thank you guys for having Thank us back. Thank you. What are you going to call this? Uh, sport time Greenberg. Okay. <laughs> oh, sounds yep. great. That's Excellent. 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 That's really, we keep it simple. We call it sport time and where it is. That's a brand. Yeah. That's a brand. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thank great you. program. Thank you all. Thank you.